Now we'll be talking about automation and collaboration across multiple swarms using Docker Cloud. And to teach us about this topic is Marcus, a Senior Engineering Manager on the Docker Cloud team. Uh, he's the one who makes sure your pushes and your pulls work. So I'm sure most everybody has done a push or a pull here in the audience. You have this man to thank for it. And uh, he tells me that uh, he's, he's from Brazil, he's Brazilian, um, but the people on his team describe him as maybe the worst Brazilian ever, as he doesn't know how to dance and he doesn't know how to play soccer. But that's okay. I've got something in common with you. I'm Canadian. I'm also the worst Brazilian ever. Right. <laughs> yeah. I can't dance. I can't play soccer. So you're not alone. You're, you're fine. <laughs> And, and with him is Fernando, Senior Engineering Manager, also on the Docker Cloud team. Uh, he's leading the team of engineers working on the run inside of Docker Cloud. So getting those containers running inside of Docker Cloud. And remarkably has lived in nine different cities in the last nine years. And was that by choice? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and all, all here on the uh, North North American continent. No, Spain, UK, Argentina. That's great. And US. Yeah, I'm I'm jealous <laughs> of traveling around and new experiences. That's awesome. So, without further ado, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you. So, hello everyone. Um, we are going to be talking about fleet management. So you saw in yesterday's keynote how easy it was for um, Ryan and Christy to deploy a service to a remote swarm using the new desktop to cloud feature. So we are going to be talking about how it works and how it will uh, help you be more efficient at your job as developers. So first we are going to have a look at what Docker Cloud is, for those of you who are not familiar with that. Then we are going to be touching on what are the challenges that a typical developer faces when trying to move from local development to a remote swarm. Then we are going to have a look at how Docker Cloud can help you in three areas, provisioning, management, and collaboration. After that, we are going to have a look at the technical architecture of how this works behind the scenes. And then at the end, we are going to be talking about the roadmap for fleet management and Docker Cloud, and some time for Q&A. So let's start with Docker Cloud. Who here has used Docker Cloud or is using Docker Cloud or Docker Hub? OK, lots of people. So yes, for those of you who are new to Docker, Docker Cloud is a set of managed services provided by Docker to help individual developers and small teams uh, build, ship, and run applications faster. So our objective is to provide an end-to-end -end platform, very easy to use, very simple, to help you accelerate your development and to help you continuously deliver your application. So these services fall into three categories. They fall into build, ship, and run, and I'm sure you're familiar with all this. So starting with build, what does Docker Cloud uh, do for you? So with Docker Cloud, um, Docker Cloud will take care of automatically testing and building your Docker images on your GitHub and Bitbucket repositories. So just by linking your account to Docker Cloud, Docker Cloud will automate, will receive the, web, uh, the webhook and automate the testing and building those Docker images. And this feature is super popular in Docker Cloud. We are running over half a million builds per month currently. So lots of people using it. Next, once you have the image automatically built and tested, where do you store it? Well, Docker Cloud is the largest Docker registry in the world. We have over 800,000 repositories in Docker Cloud today. And we have served over 12 billion pools today, which is a lot of, you know, a big bill of AWS every month. But not only that, we can also security scan your images. So you might be familiar with this. Docker Cloud can binary scan your images for vulnerabilities. So if any third party component on your image is vulnerable, you will, you will have the choice and the option to go back, update that component, and push back again before that image goes to production. And now that I have all my images tested and built in Docker Cloud, what do I do with them? I have to deploy them somewhere. And this is where the new swarm management feature comes in. This is the feature where Docker Cloud will help you provision and manage multiple swarms, and it's going to be the uh, topic of this talk. So 
what are the typical challenges that a developer faces when trying to move from their laptop to a remote swarm? The first one is, how do I provision a swarm? I don't have anything. I just have my laptop with Docker for Mac. How do I get to getting a, a swarm deployed quickly and securely? You might opt for the manual process of going to the provider, go to the UI, learn the UI, spin up some VMs or auto-scaling groups, security groups, elastic load balancers, and on and on. Install Docker, set up the managers, uh, connect, uh, connect them, uh, and so on. So this is process is slow. You cannot reproduce it, and it's prone to errors. So you might think, okay, let's use a configuration management tool. Let's use Puppet or Chef uh, or Terraform to provision this. It's fine. It will automate some of this process for you, but you will still have to create a script for Terraform or a script for Ansible to deploy this swarm from scratch. And you have to maintain it, and you will have to learn a new tool, and so on. So there must be a better way of doing this. Next, once I have my swarms deployed in my cloud provider or in different cloud providers, how do I connect to them? Well, the only method of, the only authentication method supported today in Engine is TLS certificates. So let's use TLS certificates. That means that I have to create my own certificate authority. I have to keep it somewhere safe. I have to create some certificates. I have to put the public key for the CA into every manager. I have to make sure that new managers get the same key. I have to restart the daemon. I have to do so many things to just get my client connecting to that swarm. Or I can use the SSH key that I provided the, the, the cloud provider with to deploy the, the VMs. But that has lots of challenges. One of them is I have to SSH into a manager. And when I'm in the manager, I don't have access to my local file system. So things like deploying a compose file uh, that I have on my laptop becomes impossible. I have to copy it. I have to copy every secret to the remote manager in order to deploy the compose file. Or things like pulling private images. Now, because I'm not using the credentials on my laptop, I have to docker login on the manager, store my credentials there, so I can deploy a stack with private images. So there must be a better way. And collaboration. So how do I share access with other people, with my teammates? Because we are usually part of teams. With TLS certificates, I will have to create certificates for my teammates. I will have to make sure that they don't expire. If my teammates leave my team, I will have to revoke them, and revocation in TLS is a pain. Or with SSH keys, I will have to collect all the public keys from my teammates, and again, I will have to make sure that every manager has those SSH keys. I will have to make sure that new managers get the SSH keys as well. And if they leave the, the team, I will have to remove all of that. So this is overhead that I would like to avoid if I'm a developer. So we saw three problems, provisioning, connecting to swarms, and collaborating on swarms. So let's start with swarm provisioning, and Marco is going to talk about that. All right. Thanks, Fernando. So Fernando explained pretty well the, the issues that you face when you're collaborating on a swarm and you have to manage your swarm across teams. So let's go into how the provision part works and how Docker Cloud can help you. So before we go into the specific parts of Docker Cloud and how Docker Cloud addressed that, that issue, uh, I would like to talk about the work that we're doing at Docker to just address the deploying the best Docker experience on your cloud provider of choice. So if you're, I think most people in this room is probably using a cloud provider some, in some fashion or other. And if you want to run on Docker on AWS, and you want to run Docker on Azure or Google Cloud, how do you do that? How do you make sure that the provider, the version of the way you're running Docker is the best way for that provider? We address that by providing native integration with the provider. So for example, if you're using Docker for AWS and you need to do logging, Docker for AWS is gonna hook up to CloudWatch. So all the logs from your uh, engine and for your container is gonna be shipped to AWS. You don't have to manage configurations, anything. Everything is done for Docker via Docker for AWS. And we have the type of integration all across the board, and we keep expanding them. So we have, as, so we can use the power of the platform or the cloud provider of your choice to have the best experience on that cloud provider. And that goes in, like pretty deep into the stack. Um, the other area that, that provides a lot of help for you is how to manage the health of your swarm. 
So again, if you're on Docker for AWS and you need to run five manager nodes, five worker nodes, or 10 worker nodes, how do you make sure that you always have the correct number of, uh, of nodes running? What if one dies? You're running on AWS, sometimes a node has to be replaced for some reason for maintenance or something. You would have to write scripts to manage that. With Docker for AWS, we use auto-scaling groups to make sure that every time a manager or a worker goes down, it gets re replaced with a new one, and that's joined the swarm as well. So you don't have to write any extra configuration for that to work. And as you saw on the keynote uh, that Solomon delivered yesterday, we are Docker for AWS, Docker for Azure, and Docker for Google Cloud leverage Linux Kit to build a custom-based Linux distribution that's focused on container workloads. So you make sure to run the best Linux distribution to your Docker containers. And it has a lot of focus on security, stability, so you're running the latest kernels with all the hardening for container-specific workloads. So that's a big differentiator when using Docker for AWS, Docker for Azure, and Docker for Google Cloud. And when you're using, when you're using those, those solutions, you can use Docker Cloud to make the whole process even easier for you. Docker Cloud centralized all the provisioning, so from the, from the Docker Cloud interface, you can set up and provision your swarms directly, and you have the ease of use of the Docker Cloud interface. So instead of talking, let's just do a quick demo of how that works. So let me get out of presentation mode. Okay, so I'm from Mayo for today, and I'm on the Docker Cloud uh, interface. I don't know how many people are familiar with Docker Cloud, but here is the list of all the swarms, and from here you can see all the swarms you have on your personal account. So, I had deployed a couple of swarms here, and you can see the status of them. You can see where they were deployed, they were provided on AWS, and when they were registered with Docker Cloud. But for this purpose, I just wanna create a new one. So let's go to create. Again, so everything is centralized on the Docker Cloud UI. And we extend some of the concepts that we use for repos to swarms as well. So you have a notion of namespace, so all your swarms are namespace in Docker Cloud. So here I'm for my offer today. So let's give it a name. We are in Austin, so let's not be creative. And just, it does, that's just a name that will allow you to address that swarm in the future. And this is a beta version, so some of your lucky few can see Microsoft Azure, but we're gonna use uh, AWS as in everyone can access that today. So again, we're exposing the Docker for AWS settings, so you can pick a region. Let's pick Ohio is underrepresented as a demo region in AWS. And then you have a couple of choices, right? You can select how many managers you want to run, how many workers, and it's all configurable through the, this UI. So you don't have to mess with JSON or any other uh, markup language. Everything's controlled through here, and we can provide some feedback what you need. So three and five looks good. You have some options like the CloudWatch logging that I mentioned before, and you have a couple options. So let's say we're gonna use T2 medium for the managers and for the workers as well. Let's check everything looks good. I think I'm ready to go. I'm ready to create my swarm. So I can, oh, see, I need to do one more check. I just need to pick one SSH key so I have a way to get into the swarm if something doesn't work. And also it's always a good, AWS requires an SSH key for access anyway, so we cannot skip that step. So let's go and let's create a swarm. So now, we are creating a swarm talking directly to the AWS APIs, and we're setting up everything. We're setting up load balancer, security groups, uh, EC2 instance, everything. Everything's being tied up for you, and you don't have to worry about any of the configuration to make that work. And from the interface, you can see what's the progress. It's saying it's deploying, and when that goes to deploy, it's be ready for you. It will be show as deployed, similar to here. And if something fails, from here you can see the reason, you can see the logs, and you can address the problems and fix anything that you need. So that's great. So if you can have, you can deploy a new swarm straight from Docker Cloud. But what if you cannot uh, deploy a new swarm? Let's say you have a custom setup or you have existing swarms that you have to deploy. How do you bring them to Docker Cloud and use the Docker Cloud features? So to address that, we create this feature called Bring Your Own Swarm, and that allows to bring any swarm you have into Docker Cloud using our, our registration process that we devised. So I just click on Bring Your Own Swarm, and we just give you a command. It's just, it's just Docker, it's just a container that you can run in any swarm. 
So let's find a shell. So I'm going to remote to a swarm. Can everyone see the? Okay. So let's make a font one point. That's good. So I'm on the swarm, and I can list. I have a couple of managers, a couple of workers, and in this case, it's running on Azure. So I can just go run the command, the Docker Cloud provider, and that's just a container. And behind the scene, the container is going to ask for your credentials, so you know who you are. And so I say I'm from Iowa today. I enter the password, and now because it knows who you are, it can ask, it can ask you what namespace you want to associate a swarm with. So I have a couple of options. I want to be on my personal account, and I want to name it Texas. So it's going to be, and I press enter, and let's see. All right, so pretty easy. You got feedback. Uh, the container is running. Let's go back to Docker Cloud. Oops. And now the Docker Cloud UI knows that the, con the registration container pinged back Docker Cloud, and the container is registered. So Docker Cloud knows where the container is. And if you close their window, you can see there's a bring your own swarm container. And it was registered a few seconds ago, and it's not a good state. When we ping that back, and you know what's the state of the swarm. So from now, you have a swarm that's fully ready for you to use, and Fernando's gonna cover what you can do with that. Thanks, Fernando. Thank you. Okay, so now that we have um, our son's provision or registered with Docker Cloud, what does Docker Cloud provide? Like, why would I do that? The first thing that Docker Cloud provides is discovery. So Docker Cloud becomes the single uh, pane of glass where you can see all the swarms that you have provisioned or registered or that you have access to from other teams. So all is centralized in just one place and you just have to know the name of the swarm, no host names or anything like that. Also, we provide secure connectivity to the managers so you don't have to keep track of what the managers are. For example, if, we, if you provision a Docker for AWS, Docker for AWS will create a load balancer for you. Docker Cloud behind the scenes stores this host name uh, internally, so when you use the swarm name, it automatically resolves to the ELB. If it's a bring your own swarm, we know we keep track of the IPs of the managers, so we can go back to them um, in case you want to connect to the swarm. So if managers come and go, uh, we still keep track always a uh, uh, pointer to the manager. If we lose track of a, of a swarm, we will show you on the, on the interface, so you have to do something to fix that. Also, Docker Cloud becomes the authorization and authentication backend for your swarm. So you just need your Docker Cloud account or your Docker ID, uh, also known as your Docker ID, um, to connect to any swarm that you have access to. So no TLS certificates, no SSH keys, just your login and password, and you can access any swarm that you have been granted access to. That means that you can share access to your swarms with any of your teammates by just knowing their Docker ID. Very powerful. So in Docker Cloud, as you know, there are some special accounts that are called organization accounts. These accounts store objects that can be accessed by multiple users. You might be familiar with this if you already use uh, repositories with Docker Hub or Docker Cloud. So these accounts, to give access to these uh, objects, you create teams, and a team is just a collection of users that have the same access level to the same set of resources. So now you can also add swarms uh, to teams as well as repositories. And it works the same way. So if you already have teams um, already in your organization that have access to some repos, you can reuse them to give them access to your swarms now. And the last thing is the integration with Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows. So if you want to connect to a swarm that you deployed on your own account or on an on organization account, you can just drop uh, the menu from Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, and you will see all your repos and all your swarms in that interface. And if you want to connect to them, it's just one click and go, and you will be connected to the swarm. And the only thing you will need is the Docker ID. And this shell will have access to your local file system. So if you want to deploy a compose file or access a secret that you have in your laptop, you can do that. So let's see how it works. So I'm here in my Docker for Mac. I have Docker for Mac installed. And just a reminder, I'm running 17.05 Edge. The fleet management features of Docker Cloud are enabled by default in the Edge version, so you can uh, go now and, and check it out. 
So in this version, when you open the menu, you will see that there's a new option called sign in create Docker ID, where it allows you to log in with your, uh, with your account. So I will just log in here. Once you log in, Docker for Mac will contact Docker Cloud and pull all your repositories and forms. So you can see here, I see all the, all the repos that I have uh, in my account and all the swarms that I have access, that I deployed or registered with Docker Cloud. So I have the Austin and the Texas uh, swarms that we just deployed and registered. So if I want to connect, for example, to the Texas one, which uh, we brought from Azure, I can just click there, and it will get a shell uh, connected to that swarm. And I can prove it by doing an ODLS. So this is the, the swarm that we just registered uh, from Azure. The good thing about this is that this is my laptop. So I have access to my compose file, my secret files, my credentials uh, that are stored in the, in the OSX keychain. So I don't have to do anything. I don't have to log in uh, again to pull private images. So if I want to deploy this, I just do Docker stack deploy, Docker compose. I can do with registry auth. So this Docker CLI is actually running on my laptop. So it will be able to access the encrypted credentials on the keychain and then just give it a name. So this, this will go and create the, the service in the swarm. If now I want to access it, uh, oops, one second. Now if I want to access it, um, I just need the, the host name for the last load balancer. In this case, um, it was a, a Docker for Azure swarm. So Docker for Azure and Docker for AWS will automatically configure a load balancer for you, so you can use it to access your application. So every service that gets deployed to that swarm will get automatically configured in that load balancer and that security group for you. So you can see, I, I can go there. This is the IP address of the load balancer uh, in Azure that it was automatically configured by me, uh, by Docker for um, Azure. So if I go to that IP, I should see my new website uh, running on that swarm. So this is load balanced by Azure. I didn't have to configure any load balances. I didn't have to leave my desktop um, to enable it on the load balancer. It was automatically configured. Okay, now I want to deploy this to my organization account, uh, to my organization production cluster. So I need access to it. I can drop down the menu. I can switch to my organization account. To do that, I just hover over my username and I will see a list of all the organizations that I'm part of. Basically, I'm part of any team of those organizations. So I see the Docker Pets organization here, so I'm gonna use it. Now it's activated. I can see all the repos of that organization account and I can see all the swarms, but I don't have access to any swarms, so I don't see anything. So I will ask Marcus, who is the owner of the org, to give me access to it. Cool, so as we talked before, Docker Cloud centralize all the information that you need to manage your organization. So let me find myself again. Okay, so this is my account now, and I'm on the my organization account called Docker Pets. So from Docker Pets account, I have full control over the resource of my organization. So I have the list of repositories, swarms, and I can manage my teams as well. So if I go to the, the Teams tab, I can see the developers group on the, on the screen, and I can click, and I can see Fermayo is a member of that group. So everything looks good here, and I can go to the Permissions tab. So the Permissions tab, I can see all the resources associated with that team. So that means who can have access to specific resources. So I can see repository access. I'm not gonna go into details of this today, but I want to give Fernando access to a specific swarm. So I can see a prod swarm here, and I can give a permission to it. Right now, we only allow one level of permission, that's you have full access to the swarm, and that's the current state of the our permission system, but we're revising that in the future. So, production admin per access to the swarm, that looks good, so I'm gonna grant that permission. If I had more swarms, I could give more, uh, could give more access, so I could have one team that have access to production swarm, another team that have access to a staging swarm. And I can do mix, I can have any kind of control that I want from this interface. So now, Fernando should be all set, he should be able to access the swarm. Okay. So that was very easy to do. Now let's see if it works. So I will go back to my desktop. I will open my Docker for Mac menu. I didn't log out or log back in. And I just go to swarms, and you can see the swarm that I just 
uh, being given access to. So in order to connect to it, I just click on it, and I have my shell uh, connected to that swarm. And again, I can just here stack my uh, Docker stack deploy my stack, and it will work as you expect it to work. Now, let's say that I leave the team, I leave the company, for example. So let's see how it is, is to just revoke my access immediately uh, using fleet management. Cool. All right. So let me step back in the role of the organization owner. So the same way that was easy to grant Fernando access to Swarm, I can easily take the access away. So I'm still on the permissions tab, and I could just revoke access to individual Swarm. So let's say Fernando should not have access to the produ production Swarm anymore. What should I do? I could just remove that access. Done. He would not have access to the Swarm anymore. But in case he's leaving a team, the correct way to do it would be to just remove him from the team. So I will try to remove, just confirm, and now Fernando is no longer part of that team. So I have from the Docker Cloud UI, you have full control who can access what, and you can manage that change online. Okay. So let's see. So I go back to my shell. I didn't log back out. I, I didn't log out or anything. I'm still connected to the production swarm that I, uh, I had access to. So if I just try to execute any command against this swarm, it will get an unauthorized error. So this means that our setup, the swarm management proxies, will check every call that, uh, that is made on every swarm and make sure that the authenticated user of that call has actually access uh, to that swarm. And the changes are effective immediately. So there's no delay on when you remove access. So that's, that was easy. So we saw how, how easy it is with desktop to cloud to connect to a remote swarm with just one click, access my local files, access my local credentials for any registry, connect to uh, swarms of any of other users, and how easy it was to configure access and revoking access uh, to those swarms. So now Marco is going to talk about uh, a bit more detail into the technical architecture of how this actually works behind the scenes. Cool. Thanks, Fernando. All right. So when we started this process, we knew that we wanted to we want Docker Swarm to leverage all the functionality of the Docker platform. At the time, uh, Docker Swarm had been recently announced, and we wanted to be as close as possible to the platform. But being cloud and having this goal to have the easiest way of managing application online, we wanted to have a way to bring all the power of Docker and Power Swarm in an easy to use and centralized interface for, for users. So we had a couple of goals. And one of them was we wanted to make as secure as possible by providing end-to-end -end encryption between all those pieces that we saw today. We wanted to make sure that we could use Docker ID for authentication. So you could use the same credentials you use to manage your repositories. You could use that to manage your swarms. And we wanted to provide fine level uh, authorization controls. So what you thought about granting permission to individual swarms, we wanted, there was things that we wanted to do. And we knew that we didn't want to modify the Docker platform directly. We didn't want to modify the CLI. We didn't want to modify the engine. So we wanted to do that with just Docker, pure Docker containers, so we adopted a, uh, a pattern that we call ambassadors. In our case, ambassadors uh, containers. So in our case, what we call ambassador containers are those two proxies that you can see on either side. So on the left side, you can see the client. So Docker for Mac or your, or your CLI. So that client proxy is a proxy that is able to talk to Docker Cloud and is also able to talk to a proxy on your swarm. So what does the pattern allows us to do is to wrap Docker without modifying Docker Engine or Docker CLI to provide any authentication mechanisms we want. In our case, allow us to provide uh, authentication and authorization based on Docker Cloud. So for that to work, we also we had a, a couple requirements from the security team. We wanted to make sure that your tokens would not be could not be leaked. They have time to live and they were follow some principles that we learned when we manage the registry. So as a user, when you are requesting uh, to connect to a swarm, the user has to go first to Docker Cloud. And Docker Cloud was, will grant a specific token that only grant access to a swarm, to a single swarm, and that token has a time to live. So 
after the user on the client grants that token, is granted that token, he can go and present to the Swarm. And Swarm can use Docker Cloud to make sure that that token is valid. So we use that by leveraging uh, uh, a key infrastructure so we don't have to do that. We manage all that for you. So you just have to use Docker Cloud and Docker Cloud will manage all the authentication and authorization behind the scene. And it's all encrypted with TLS, every layer of the, of the process. So we don't, we don't risk uh, leaking in plain text anywhere. And the main thing that we allow us to do was to allow you to have near instant uh, access to a swarm without having to deploy your own PKI infrastructure, managing your own keys, anything like that. And we didn't touch anything on the Docker platform itself. We just do that by running containers on the swarm as a service on the swarm manager and running containers on your CLI as well. All of that without touching anything on, on Docker. So we feel like there's a really powerful platform that allow us to do a lot of interesting things, allow us to build even more service into, into the Docker Cloud and expand Docker Cloud as a platform for Docker itself. So those are all the things, oops, 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 oops. That was too fast, I hope no one said that. Uh, <laughs> Damn ticker. Um, so we're gonna talk about what's coming next. Those are the things we have available on Docker Cloud right now, but we wanna talk about what's in our roadmap for the upcoming year. So, come on, don't do that, that to me. Come on. All right, cool, stop there. Uh, Docker, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this slide, Docker for Azure and Docker for Google Cloud are available, uh, are, are available for, from Docker, and they're gonna become available on the Docker Cloud interface very soon. Some selected few people are already has, receiving access to Docker for Azure, and that's gonna be rolling out more broadly pretty soon. And Docker, same for Docker for Google Cloud. Second, we wanted to allow uh, users to select what version of Docker is right for them. So you might be using Docker Edge, uh, CE Edge on your QA environment, on your development environment. But for production, you want to use a more stable version. And you can use Docker CE stable, or you can use Docker EE if you need support from Docker and you need a, a more stable uh, distribution. So you, from, Docker, from Docker Cloud, you'll be able to select whatever version of Docker fits your needs and control that directly. They will also allow you to have better control of the life cycle of your swarm. So if you need to destroy the swarm, if you need to upgrade, all, everything's gonna be done from the Docker Cloud UI. And as we talked about this goal of having a centralized view of your swarms on Docker Cloud, one thing that's missing and is, come on, right, with sparkles and come back. All right, I got, stay there, all right. So that was another kind of announcement I wanted to make, but this is what we can do with it, um, is a Docker Cloud Swarm UI. So we want to have a way for every user that runs a Swarm on Docker Cloud to have, to, ask, to have access to a centralized UI for your Swarms. So you can go and select any Swarm in your list and launch a, a UI for that Swarm and have full control of your Swarm from that UI. So we have a, oh, come on. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm gonna use this for now on. Um, so here's a preview, it's a screenshot of the UI. Um, and as we start uh, working and releasing that, it has the full view of your swarm. So you can have full control over stats, uh, node management, promotion, de demotion, uh, deploy stacks, manage the secrets, everything from a UI available on Docker Cloud. And it's something that we internally are really excited about and I hope you, everyone here is gonna give it a try and see what, what you think. And that's all from the talk today in terms of features. We ask you to, to vote what you think of the talk and give us feedback. And if you have any questions about cloud, you can send us an email on cloud.docker.com or and give it a try on cloud.docker.com. Cloud.docker.com. Cool. Yep, thank, thank you. you all. So the, the way we're taking questions here is I'd ask you to, to come to the front and use the mic uh, so we can capture the audio 
uh, for the recording later. There's uh, another mic over here as well. If you'd like to, to come up and ask a question, uh, please feel free to do so. And uh, again, you know, a reminder, don't forget to vote in the app. The, the top voted sessions will be repeated tomorrow, and that's, those are the sessions uh, as voted by all of the attendees of DockerCon here. Let's take a first question. We've got about six or seven minutes. Cool. Uh, I got a question. Uh, are there any ongoing plans to add uh, bring your own single sign-on support to Docker authentication layer to support internal um, organization? You mean bring an external single sign-on provider or? Yes, to to be able to. Um, uh, we don't have any firm roadmap for that. Uh, it, we know that's something that users need uh, or want, and we're evaluating how to do that better. We don't have a firm roadmap for that. Thank you. So, uh, I have two questions uh, regarding deployment uh, on-prem. Uh, so first one, are there any plans for having uh, deployments for OpenStack? And second, uh, could it be possible to run Docker Cloud on-prem such that we manage our own swarm so we can have a dev swarm, test swarm, and multiple production swarms? And the multiple production swarm would also need uh, GDAJ, so something to put a uh, load balancer between, in front of two different swarms uh, running in two geographical regions. Right. So for the first uh, part, um, we are working on a call home feature um, that will allow you to register swarms that are behind the firewall. Um, so instead of us talking to the managers directly, we'll call back from the manager to Docker Cloud. So we'll skip any uh, NAT or firewall issues uh, that you might have. Uh, so that will still be the public Docker Cloud managing your on-prem swarm, uh, but it will allow you to do that. Uh, so you will be able to connect through cloud to your uh, swarm on-prem. Um, for the second one, uh, the, the provisioning that we have today is based on Docker editions. So as you know, there's an AWS, an Azure, and a Google one. Uh, we follow that pattern. So whatever there's a Docker edition for that specific platform, will follow and will use it. Um, and we are now heavily investing in provisioning with Infracade. Um, so um, whatever the editions team, um, you know, all the editions that they, they produce, we will be able to provision from Docker Cloud. But Docker Cloud will not have um, any, other, um, any other integrations with any other cloud providers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So just a clarification. I saw that you have a bring your own swarm feature. Does this work with uh, also 1.13 version of Swarm custom made on bare metal also, or is it just for Swarms created manually on AWS uh, ECS service or stuff like that? Um, so it will work on any, any Swarm. I think we support the current and the previous version. So there's a minimum version, I think it's 1.13, uh, where you, we will support. Uh, so any Swarm that you know, has that version on words, it will work. Okay, thank you. While deploying the swarm in AWS, I while deploying the swarm in AWS, I assume that you are using and deploying some uh, cloud formation templates and other things behind the scene. Is there any way to customize them from uh, setting up your own custom AMI to changing some security groups or, or adjusting them in a way that probably they are required if you want that swarm to be part of the larger deployment that involves other things? Yeah. So. Um, the CloudFormation template for the, uh, Docker for AWS is public. You can, you can have a look at it. Uh, it exposes some configuration through parameters. So if you go, even if you go through the, through the Docker Cloud UI or the CloudFormation UI, and this is actually a CloudFormation template, uh, what is, is deploying, uh, you will see some, param some things that you can change. Uh, the number of instances on the manager's auto scaling group or the worker's uh, auto scaling group. Uh, now they are working on a version of it that will allow you to select the VPC. Uh, if you want to use an existing VPC for your swarm. At the moment, it creates one VPC per swarm. Uh, so some things are being exposed as parameters. Um, but if you want to deeply uh, change the template, uh, I think it's best for you to download the one that we use, um, have a look at the security group uh, information, change it, and deploy that one. And then for Docker Cloud, you can just run the registration and, and, and it will appear in Docker Cloud. And actually, that is what we do for Docker Cloud AWS. We deploy the CloudFormation. 
and then at the end we run the registration and it runs it. Um, so they, they look the same, either if you deploy yourself and register or we deploy it, in the end it's, it's the same functionality. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hello. This regarding bring your own swarm. swarm. So if uh, my swarm is inside firewall in enterprise like uh, on data center, does it require specific uh, port openings or like how it will interact? Because you gave the demo, but I don't know like how it works under the hood, how it interacts yeah. with the cloud. Yeah, so for now it will use the, uh, it will try to connect through a public IP of any of the managers um, if it's a bring your own swarm. But that's while in beta, but we are working on a call home uh, feature where if it detects that it cannot connect from the outside because you are behind a firewall, it will open a reverse tunnel to us. So it doesn't matter if you, if you don't have any public IPs, uh, we will connect back to cloud so we can connect through it, uh, through the tunnel, back to the swarm. So it will work virtually anywhere. It can be on your laptop, it can be anywhere, and we'll create that, uh, that connection. Okay. That, that is still not there, we're working on it. So any timeline on that? Like um, Q2, Q3, okay. I cannot commit. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. This is software. Estimates are <laughs> practically meaningless. <laughs> okay, thanks so much again for the excellent Thank session. Thank you. Thanks.